Hello everyone, my name is Moon Soo Jung from Sungkyunkan University in South Korea. Let me present our work, Hierarchical Raster Occlusion Curling. Our work is based on raster occlusion curling with hierarchy and late casting for scalability. Occlusion curling is a process which bypasses rendering of occluded hidden by visible occluders. This process prevents wasted rendering operations, so it's crucial in accelerating geometry rendering. There are two major types of occlusion curling. One is to pre-process the visibility of the geometry in the scene. The other is online occlusion curling. Online occlusion curling carries the visibility from viewpoint without pre-processing on the fly, and online occlusion curling test visibility on screen space. There are two major categories in online occlusion curling. One is pre-bound test within the axis aligned screen space bounds. The other is pre-fragment test within rasterized full object bounds. The classic Occlusion curling technique uses pre-bound test. It tests the axis or line bound. It's highly scalable, resulting from batch tests, but curling efficiency is low due to the wider, conservative bound. It performs curling with reprojection of the depth buffer generated in the previous frame for occlusion map and it commonly uses screen space hierarchy like minmap for efficient tests. As an alternative, there's a method which tests the visibility in the rasterized object bounds. It tests whether any of the fragments are visible against the occlusion map. There are two major chip PU-driven techniques, one's hardware occlusion theory and the other raster occlusion curling. Hardware occlusion theory counts the fragments that pass the depth test. The theory itself is passed, but in cause stored by leadback of the research, so such as CHC and CHC plus plus utilize hierarchical queries. Cuts of hierarchy are maintained based on temporal coherence. With hierarchy, they can use batch queries and suppress redundant queries largely, but too many queries lead to non trivial latency. Another per object bound method. Lester occlusion curling. Lester occlusion curling tests the visibility by direct tagging to visibility buffer. If any of fragments in object bound pass the early Z, object visibilities are tagged and they utilize indirect multi draw for a store free pipeline. But Lester occlusion curling lesterizes the bounds of or objects for occlusion test. So for complex scenes, iterating over every object can be costly. This point motivates our hierarchy-based approach for scalability. This is our contributions, ours, hierarchical ROC. We extract the cars occluded groups using BVH and test the visibility in a bed. And ours hybrid curling solution, we rasterize the bounds of occluded groups and cast per pixel layer for visibility test of the individual objects. The hierarchy is traversed implicitly in the lake casting which avoids the hierarchical iteration in the host. D 
This video shows how many bounds of objects are an ROC rasterize for the occlusion test. We can see that ours rasterize very few bounds compared to the ROC because ROC performs occlusion test for all objects in every frame. So let's take a look at our curling algorithm. This is an overview of our algorithm. Our algorithm consists of four stages. Key stages are extraction of occluded groups and batch occlusion test. Let's take a closer look at each stage. First, this is occlusion map rendering. It selects the potential occluders with temporal coherence and it renders the potential occluder with early G to select effective occluder. Their depth buffers use it as occlusion map in the occlusion test stage. Second stage is extraction of occluded groups in this stage we find a set of the potential occluded groups in the hierarchical fetch query. Our key ideas based on an observation that all the ancestors of a visible lip node are also visible, and the visibility of the main node are undetermined. For every n, we traverse bottom up. From each n, we can find the visible ancestor and sibling nodes of N and V are marked as unknown G, which require testing occlusion. We continue to traverse until we meet an already visited node V or root node R. After traversing for all occluders, we collect node with unknown state and add them in potential occluded groups. We also perform few fluxton curling in the end of the stage. Third stage is batch occlusion test. The traversal for intersections starts from the interior node that triggers the rasterization of the bounds with allergy. In this phase, fully hidden occluded groups are implicitly Curly. And a primary ray is cast at each fragment. Each fine grain tests for individual occluded. Objects at intersections are added to the set of potentially visible occluded. And ray casting should not stop at the near least intersection as usual, because lay blocked by the conjunctive bounds are not necessarily blocked by real object geometries. Finally, we render the actual geometries of the potentially visible occluders. We again resort to origin for efficiency and add object facing origin to the set of the rendered object. After rendering all the visible occluders, we merge those with the potential occluders to initialize the next frame rendering. In addition to our basic algorithm, we present two acceleration techniques. The multi-draw process is a command buffer filled for the entire object in a single bed, which greatly reduces the driver overhead of GPUs. For curling, we set the instance counters for occluded objects to GROs. Unfortunately, modern GPUs still do not well handle such void objects, resulting in performance drop for many void objects. So we tightly pack and render with the command buffer so that only effective objects are handled in multi-draw. The store pre-pipeline is already efficient with the packing, but we still have to provide counter for max drop count. 
drug count can be still referenced in GPU, but max drug count can't. The standard usage of max drug count is using the number of the entire object, but this card is still handling the void object. Hence, we read back the counter of valid object and use it for the count. Whereas, this stores the pipeline, it completely removes redundancy in multi-draw and achieves higher performance for complex scenes. We can read the counters three times, batch occlusion test, occluded rendering, and occlusion map rendering. The other technique is occluder filtering. In our algorithm, the origin selects occluder for temporal coherence. However, the origin inherently includes non-trivial false positive. Invisible objects rendered earlier than their blockers can be classified as falsely visible. To select pure true positive, we use the item buffer techniques. While rendering real geometries for occluders and occludes, we write their indices in item buffer. So we can select only true positive with an item buffer. And it can reduce potential occluders and more occludes can be curled. Let's take a look at our experimental research and comparisons with existing methods. We implemented and experimented our algorithm on this platform, and four camera animated scenes are used for the experiment. The four scenes are as follows slides. We compare our solution with locally rendering, VFC, and ideal reference rendering. Reference pre record all the visible objects offline and multi draws them in a bed. We also implemented and compared four existing solutions, including CHC, ROC. WOC and IOC. In the medium scale scene, FC, you can see that ours with counter readback and occluder filtering performs best. In the large scene, RC, you can see that ours with counter readback and occluder filtering still performs best. RC prime is Faster sequence RC to evaluate dynamic scenes with faster rotations and favored camera working. In RC frame, ours with counter leaderback and occluder filtering still performs fast. And CHC plus plus ROC and ours perform slightly worse than RC. But the penalty from the lower temporal coherence is not much. Ours with counter readback and occluder filtering is also the best performance in the largest scale scene FC. In summary, for small scale scene like FN, ours with occluder filtering is best, and ours with counter leadback and occluder filtering is best for medium to large scale scenes. In conclusion, our method is less sensitive to the number of objects. This is performance comparison in 4K resolution with ROC and ours. ROC performance is very slightly faster for a small scale scene. FC, but ours performs faster for complex scenes. In conclusion, 
our per pixel light casting is still scalable in higher resolution. This shows the effects of our acceleration techniques. Based on the experiment, ours is likely to perform optimally when using only occluder filtering for small scale scenes and using both counter leadback and occluder filtering for medium to large scale scenes. Next, this shows timing variations along the camera sequence. In medium scale scene FC, except for CHC++, they are insensitive to camera movement. CHC++ gradually improves over time and converges to those of ours as objects are occluded more in closer view. But except for ROC, the performance slightly fluctuates without strong peaks. In large scale scene RC, the tendency is similar to those in FC scene. Finally, let's talk about the limitation and conclusion of our work. One of the inherent limitations of our algorithm is that we assume a static hierarchy and dynamic objects require handling independently. A potential solution's hybrid curling then uses the HROC and ROC for static and dynamic objects respectively. Another performance penalty rarely occurs in case that a camera lies inside the bound of a large occluded group. In such a case, our algorithm may cast lays for the entire screen, which is excessive. A potential solution can be an adaptive grouping, which subdivides the box down to its children to avoid testing against the large bound. This is our conclusion. Unlike the ROC, we do not immediately test the feasibility of individual occluded bounds. Instead, our algorithm first finds the cars groups of potential occluded in the hierarchy for scalable batch tests. And our solution is two phase hybrid curling. First phase, we lasterize occluded groups to initiate prepixel tests, and then we cast prepixel lay for fine grain visibility tests. This two phase approach better utilizes the fragment processors and avoids costly iteration over the hierarchy at the host. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you for your attention.